I don't know. <laughs> what's going on, Steve? I don't know. I wish I had an answer. You know what's going on. What? Well, today is all about questions for folks, so it's an ask me anything for, for Wendy and myself. I do want to introduce you to some of you guys may have not, you know me, I'm Steve. Um, the person behind the camera you met a long, long time ago, and my special guest behind her what? camera. Wait, wait. Wendy, I'm 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 doing my job. I'm behind Wendy. the camera. Listen, no, no. listen, Wendy, listen. You're but I'm in behind the camera today. You're you're in front of the camera. You're with today. me today, in front of the camera. Yeah, like you're ta you're part of this. I'm helping. No, Wendy, no, 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 no. I know, I know. That's more comfortable. Remember, <laughs> ask me anything. This is all about asking me questions. Oh, I did agree to that, didn't I? Yes, you did. So. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It is Jeez. Wendy. I am usually behind the camera. We did have some technical difficulties Just a this few. morning. Are you guys still there? I hope oh, so. yeah. Welcome. Oh, All right. So good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a new location as well. We don't want to be outside because it's raining here at the North Carolina Zoo. So we came inside this wonderful new setup and uh, didn't, didn't, didn't quite go as we thought. Yeah, you know, best laid plans. Didn't, always, always, didn't, always. It didn't work, and that's all right. Flexibility. Let us introduce you to Leslie. Leslie's behind the camera today. She's waving. You just don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so Leslie is behind the camera. She's going to be sharing with us the questions you guys have for Wendy and myself. We hope you guys brought some. So we're so excited to do something a little bit different with you guys today to, to answer questions you might have for Wendy and myself. Because we don't always get to answer every single question that you guys have. And we do have our team of friends behind yep. us, not literally behind us, but well, there are on too. their computers some answering of some of the questions that we That's may not get to today. Did um, they don't have thumbs. They can't we did, type, Steve. We did, right? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> These guys don't have thumbs. They can't type. Oh, of course. So our, our human friends... Gotcha. In our in our edu our CES department, our conservation education science department, are the and ones I, that help us behind the scenes. And I bet you a dime to a dollar they were they were doing some pretty nice stuff, saying some good things to people as they were waiting, as we we're trying to get set up. I'm sure they were probably panicking a little. Bit. <laughs> well, my phone blew up. I just know a little we bit. were. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we were. I was sweating. So that's fantastic. So thank you guys so much for hanging out. Uh, since it is all about questions that we guys are going to be taking from you guys to us, I have a question for you. Oh no. I do. Okay. I have a question for you. Okay. Since they asked me anything, I wanted to get outside the zoo box. Okay. What's your favorite color? Ooh. Yeah, well, you know, I know you're all about decorating. Wendy's an amazing I, decorator. I love color. You do I love, love color. color. You love um, glitter. I do Is love... Is glitter a color? I love I love all things that sparkle, especially jewelry. And your personality. Oh, uh, if you're listening. <laughs> he knows that. Um, <laughs> I think... Purple is dark. Purple is one of my favorite colors. Hi, elbow. Hi, elbow. Me yeah. too. I like, yeah. I like purple too. Me too. I, you like I purple too? I didn't, I didn't know that about That's you. my favorite color. Awesome. Purple is a good color. Yeah. Um, I All have right, a question anybody, for what? you. Oh, me? Yeah. From you? You had oh. something special this weekend, and I think oh. it needs to be talked about. That is very what was your What was your special occasion this weekend? I did have an amazing occasion this weekend. It was uh, my wife, Lee and I celebrated our 17th wedding anniversary. Woo! Yeah, so we had a great time. I, had, I cooked a little dinner for her. She made a little dessert for Good us. For so you. yeah, it was a wonderful, wonderful weekend. So happy anniversary to my lovely we wife. We lovely. All right, I, we have some questions rolling in. Oh, you do? So Elizabeth, who's age four, would like hey, to Elizabeth. know if there will be any animals today. <gasps> Yes. We believe so. <laughs> yes, there will. We will bring we brought a couple of our animal ambassador yep. friends. Some of our favorites. And we will we will bring them on in just a few little, yeah. little short minutes. Thanks All for right. asking, Elizabeth. Yeah, so Haley, hey, Haley um wants to know what is the best part about working at the North Carolina Zoo. Ooh. Wendy, Wendy. Yes. Wendy is the best part about working Excuse at the Excuse me! <laughs> Leslie runs in there. Okay, Beth might be, and my wife Lee is, oh, and then there's the keeper. Yeah. So you go ahead and take that It's one. pretty much everything. <laughs> it's, it's, it's wonderful to be able to take something that we're super passionate yes. about and to be able to come into work every day, work with other people who are super passionate about mm -hmm. the same thing. I agree. And then to be able to come and share it with people who seem to be pretty passionate about what we're passionate about. Yeah. So it is, it's hard to say that it's work because we enjoy it. Now, it's definitely we, not a job. do we get dirty? Yes. Do we still have to come in sometimes on weekends and holidays? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there still... Um, a few things we don't like about it sometimes. Do I still get up very and, early and have to do paperwork and sit yeah. in the computer? Yes. But yeah. guess what? In the end, we're doing something that we love and that we're passionate about and that really helps animals and helps 
people learn about things that we're passionate about in the end. I agree 100%. I'm going to echo a lot of that. The other thing, a couple things I would add a little bit to that, uh, for me anyway, is the idea of spreading hope. Yes. There's still a chance that we're still ahead of the curve in so many places. And to get the responses we're getting from you all many times, the things you say you're doing, the things you say you're enjoying, um, the things that you want to learn about is really, really inspiring for both yeah. of us. We all make a difference. We do. We all can make a difference. There's things that we can do. From a tiny way to a very big way. And learning counts. Yep. Listening, learning, reading, doing the research on your own, all that counts. The other thing that we have to remember, and this can be a little bit more of a challenge tonight, is to not take what we do for granted. Yes. I mean, we get to see elephants and rhinos and giraffes, yes. alligators and polar bears. And we have to remember that's a special thing. Yeah. And I think that's something that, yeah. that is, it's really important for us to keep on keeping on with is that we do some really cool stuff. And there's some amazing people here at the North Carolina Zoo. Proud, so, proud to work here. A question that kind of goes along with that is Stephanie wanted to know what is your favorite animal to work with at the zoo? Ooh, I'm going to give that one to you. Stephanie, that is an absolutely horrible question. That's like, what is your favorite child? <laughs> or like, what's your favorite parent? Oh, but but they, but but, oh. uh, but there is always a way so, to answer the question. My favorite thing to do is say, "What is your favorite animal you work with now?" Because oh. I've I've been a zookeeper um, for many years, for about fourteen years before I was in the education department, and so I have special animals that were my favorite over all of those times. Mm. And I think we talked I think about that's this. That's called cheating. I fell in love with a water, an Asian water buffalo, many years ago in California. They love you back. Um. With his horn once, Ooh. and it hurt real bad. Ouch. Actually, no, he, he actually would smile at us. He would raise his lip and smile. Um, so I knew he did like me. Asian or maybe water? just the treats I okay. had for him. Um, I've fallen <laughs> in love with cats. You guys know that I have fallen in love with bats over the years. Um, ocelots are one of my favorites. Um, and, oh, God, I've worked with beluga whales. I've worked with walruses. I cannot pick. But so you have to. I would say the ones that I learn the most from right now are bats right now. Oh. Because there That's are so many. That's not I thought you were going with that. They're finding more and more and more and more all the time. Okay. Uh, they're the most like us, I believe. Ooh, um, interesting. Besides primates, obviously. Um, and, and I'm fascinated by them. Coconuts are like us. They have, they have hair and produce milk. And, are, they, are they mammals? And they're... They they're, don't have bones. No they're, bones. Right. they're dense like you. Oh! oh! What's your, what's your favorite animal <laughs> okay. to work with? Favorite animal to work with. I have not been a keeper, as Wendy has, very much in the past. Um, I do love Braveheart. Some of you may have met Braveheart here at the North Carolina Zoo. He's a red-tailed hawk. He's so cute. He's an amazing animal. Actually, he's full he, of personality. He's right there. Oh, yeah. He's in the middle there. Um, but I was lucky enough to be a keeper at Wheeling, and you may remember yes. this. And I got to work with red pandas and oh. Wheeling. I got to train them and work with he's them there. He's a little obsessed. So I do like a red panda. So I, to work with, because that's really the only one I did a whole lot of work with. Um, I've done some small training with other animals, but I did a lot with those guys. Yeah. And they are so smart. They are. And kind of cute. They are. So yeah, red pandas. I've me. always been obsessed with animals, or like to work with animals that could kill me, which my parents really didn't like when I was younger, but... I mean, it all worked out all right. Well, you do work so with far. Leslie, too. So. Yeah, she, she can be, she'll she, bite. I'm telling you. I've seen it, too. <laughs> that, that's one thing that's good about wearing face coverings yeah. now is yeah. they're, they're not as likely to get bit from me, apparently. <laughs> uh, so Karen asks, hey, pertaining Karen. to large mammals specifically, okay. do you ever receive any directly from the wild, or do they tend to come from other zoos? Wonderful, wonderful question, Karen. Thank you so very much. Very precious few. I mean, you're talking less than 1%, less than half a percent of those large mammals come from the wild, from their wild homes today. Um, the animals that we're receiving in the zoo world, if we were to get a transfer, well, you guys met Amelia, the, the um, giraffe. She came from Riverbanks a long time ago, uh, or a while back this season, a long time ago. Yeah. It wasn't that it long does, ago, really. It doesn't seem, it seems like March was just yesterday, <laughs> right. but it um, wasn't. So yeah, and there's the, the Species Survival Plans, that Species Survival Program, the SSP. They're the ones who are kind of still in charge of that. They're going to be continuing with that. And so the mammals, especially large mammals, and even it's, you can even extend that to further than that. A lot of the birds, even some of the reptiles and amphibians are being bred under human care to then be shared yeah. uh, either on a permanent loan or on a, on a breeding loan uh, with other AZA accredited facilities. 
and then that that very small percentage that actually come from nature you if if you were watching when we met our brown bear yes uh he actually came from the wild or from his natural home because he was what we call a nuisance bear mm -hmm. he was coming into human spaces most likely campgrounds and interacting with humans probably coming to get their food Absolutely. and he had the three strikes you're out rule baseball lover here and most usually those bears are euthanized yes. and because you, you do not want a grizzly bear or a brown bear interacting with humans things don't usually go well mm -hmm. so we were lucky that we had space and we actually took two from mm -hmm. Yellowstone yeah, so that is a, a wonderful story that they were able to come and live here and they'll meet another story next week. That's right. On Monday, you'll meet another story on Monday about Stay an tuned. animal that came, um, did come from the wild because yep. it was an orphan. So, so yeah. we don't actually go and collect right. from the wild. They have a backstory. Yeah, I think there that's is the best a way to reason. Say that. That's a good way to say that. It's a great yeah. way to say that. All awesome. right. So Thanks. next question from Jake. Jake. Hold on, let me find from it. State Farm. That's what I thought too. But no. Jake from Kansas City, oh. um, age 10. Jake wants to know, how is Nikita doing? And Nikita. is there any offspring yet? And he is our favorite. He should be your favorite. <laughs> uh, no, Jake, not yet. Um, thank you so much for sharing Nikita we, with we us, We love Jake. our Kansas City friends. We do love our Kansas City friends. It is awesome to see you guys on there asking questions, especially about Nikita. How neat is it um, in this time that we can actually still have that connection? You guys can still see Nikita once in a while. Um, spoiler alert, we're trying to go back to polar bear. Yes, hopefully we're next, to next month we will for sure, hopefully. Yeah, for sure, hopefully. For sure, hopefully. That's not really for sure. but <laughs> It's a good descriptive word for me. But um, yes, Nick. Nick. Um, we will be bringing Jake. him to you again next month. But no, hopefully. no breeding yet. Um, fingers crossed still, always. Um, and there's, we don't know anything at this point. We haven't done any tests as far as I know uh, on Anana, his uh, roommate. Girlfriend. Girlfriend. Part-time roommate, you know. SSP partner? It gets complicated. SSP, SSP partner. Great question, Jake. Thank you. Um, Kate would like to know, what is the oldest animal in your zoo? Ooh. Me? No. Not even close, Olivia. right? Is it Olivia? Olivia's 51, no. Olivia's Ooh. 51, but she's not the oldest. She's not the oldest. Mm -mm. See, that would have no. been my guess. Get out of mammal world. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. We have a big white round thing with... Sharp bite. That's right. The snapping turtle. Very good. Ten points for you. Doubles. Almost twice Doubles the age of the age of Olivia. I Olivia is a rhino. Um, the alligator snapping turtle is a is a hundred years old. Estimated to be a hundred years old. So that's, yeah, it's crazy. That's a one with two zeros. If you can't hear us, one hundred. That's a lot. A hundred. A hundred. Can you imagine being a hundred? No. I can't. My no. bones already hurt now, and I'm only my <laughs> oh, <no>. 45. <laughs> that was a fun question. Um, so, um, Haley, I think, again, she asked a question Ooh, earlier, buddy. We'll take it. Um, when do the animals seem to be the most active? Depends on the animal, mm -hmm. right? So some animals are, let's use some science words. Ooh, go for it. Let's use... I love science words. You guys, you guys know these. Yeah, what yeah. is an animal that is active during the day? What is the fancy science word for that? I don't remember the rest of the song. Anyone? 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 Diurnal? Oh, I was spelling it for you. I don't know if you noticed that. I was spelling it for you. Oh, you were. I, I was wondering what you were doing. So those are animals that are active during the daytime. Right. Diurnal animals. Oh, there you go, Stephanie. Good job. Awesome. So those animals you'll see out more active during the daytime. Yeah. What? What is it? What's your favorite diurnal animal? Ooh, di favorite That's diurnal animal. Zoo. Oh. That then. Dang. And then your other um, thing. Then your favorite. Favorite. Yes, because actually Patty said Wendy's favorite animal is a bat, but what is yours, Steve? So uh, we, see, we, we right. do need to go. I guess I got to go back to that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. So favorite diurnal animal at the zoo? Uh, that's a great question. I don't know. Let me think. Uh, oh, red tail hawk is really cool. Diurnal. Yeah. yeah. Diurnal. Very but far. Um, let's come. That's, that's not fair. That's a repeat. Um, so let's go with polar bear. Polar. Ooh, polar bear. That's a good one. Very diurnal. All right. So well, what's your favorite animal? That's not at the zoo, yeah. it's diurnal. Just favorite animal ever. I love, this is one of those things, like you, yeah. my animals change. Yeah, they don't time. change. I've got a top few. 
Um, but the one that's been at the top of the list for the most of the time, Cheetah. He loves the cheetah. I love the cheetah. I love the cheetah. I love the physiology. I love the behavior. I love the fact that mom teaches the babies how to hunt by bringing animals to them for them to hunt. Uh, amazing animals. And then there's a few others that are in that list too. But So we can talk cheetah. about cheetahs. Cheetahs are a different kind of hunter. They're active cool. at a different time. They're not diurnal. Nope. They are what's called crepuscular. What? Crepuscular. What do you That's guys at home word. think crepuscular might mean? That is a fancy science word there. It's not diurnal. It's not during the day, diurnal. It's not nocturnal. Like bats. Bats are nocturnal, so at night. Diurnal's day, nocturnal is night. What would crepuscular be? That's a fancy science. That's a great yeah. science word. It makes me feel sort of smart. It, it, you are smart. Yeah, sometimes. Just smart cookie. Sometimes. All right, crepuscular. Crepuscular. Any guesses? Anyone out there guessing? No, nope, not yet. Okay. If you're not active during the daytime, you're not active during the nighttime specifically, what about... Oh, uh, Amanda says active at dawn and dusk. There you go. Good job. Great job, Amanda. Yeah, dawn and dusk, kind of that intermediate yeah. time period. Which if for an animal living in a really hot environment, perfect. that's perfect for the cheetah, right? So during the hot part of the day, you don't want to go running around chasing your food. Kind of like us here in the summertime. No I want to be outside in the middle of the day. I'm not getting in a car to go to store. Yeah, but in, but in the evening, you know, when the air conditioner is better. <laughs> it works. It's <laughs> or easier. Or in the early morning when we'll run with it. it's cooler. I love it. That's when you're going to be more active, when it's cooler in that morning, cooler in the evening. And you're going to rest during the hot time of the day. Great comment. Awesome. Great Karen says she learned something new. <gasps> Yay. Nice Elbows. Elbows. <laughs> Uh, so we're pretty much caught up on most of our questions awesome. and let's, um, I thought, yeah, maybe we could show off some friends. We wanted to bring an animal to you guys that you're not going to see ever from our animal ambassadors. So he has a special story. He does. And he, unlike Steve and I, is retired. I don't know if the audience at home knows that some of our animals are retired. Um, some of them are old they have a, they're they're older in their their years mm -hmm. and he is an animal that we used to take out to hospitals to schools you might have seen him on programs and he has gotten a little old in his age and has some skeletal problems is it his spine this is backbone yes backbone his spine his spine he's got some arthritis and our veterinarians have told us that by handling him it would feel painful so we don't want to do that to him, right? So he is actually retired. He lives in a retirement home in our animal ambassador world down in education. And he just lives out his life hanging out. So this is Zink, our blue tongue skink. What do you think, Leslie? Oh, it looks good. Here, I'm going to move, actually. Whee! This is Zink. And as Wendy just told you, it's a blue tongued skink. He's an Australian, and whoa, now you know where he gets his name from. It was like right on cue. Well, you know, he's been trained. Not really. <laughs> he's a blue tongue skink. He's an Australian, kind of northern Australian species. And he has that wonderful blue tongue. You may have seen it a couple times flash out. That's an amazing adaptation. Blue is actually not a common color in wildlife. So he flashes that blue tongue. His inside of his mouth is kind of white. So he flashes that blue tongue. It's like, whoa, and startles a predator. It startles something that might be danger to this guy because he can be food. He might be eaten by larger animals. But with that blue tongue, it might startle the, pre startle the predator just long enough for him to scurry under a log or dart into some dirt. He's a pretty good digger. He's kind of really curious. It's kind of fun to see that he's yeah. up and about looking at things. He, I think he's looking, <coughs> at, I think the he's the looking at the mic. Yeah. Is he? <laughs> yeah. Like, hmm, what is yeah. that? Like, that's interesting. That's interesting. You guys remember the Muppet? Maybe Hi, Muppet. Not. He's like, I'm not sure about he's that like, thing. Maybe the Muppet is something I either want to eat or run away from. <laughs> he is a skink. Doesn't know yet. He is a skink, and as a skink, he's a type of lizard. 
You can see that ear hole begin to tell us that he has those lizard characteristics as opposed to a snake. The snakes wouldn't have that ear hole because they can't hear, if you remember right. We did an episode on, on snakes. They don't hear sounds like you and I do, but the lizard can with that ear opening. And the lizard, zinc in this case, a skink, can also blink where snakes cannot blink. He's an omnivore, therefore he's eating what? What do omnivores eat, my zoo adventure friends? They know everything. They do. They are smart people out there. I wish they would have been around to take my biology tests for me. <laughs> That's cheating. Our zoo adventure folks, though, folks do not cheat. It's helpful. They could have tutored you. No yeah. answers on that yet, but we did have, um, Karen said she never thought that lizards could suffer from arthritis. Yeah. So oh, yeah. yeah, it's really interesting. You yeah. notice that Steve is presenting um, zinc to you in this uh, crystal box sort of looking thing, and that's so we don't actually have to pick him up. Right. So we took him out of his home. This is not where he lives. This is just to transport him here and so you could see him without us holding him in hand. So you mentioned he's a retirement. So the, so the North Carolina Zoo, we have to do whole life care, huh? It, I mean, it's a responsibility that we take when we, when we take on the responsibility of an animal. Just yes. like when you have a dog at home, if your dog has arthritis, you usually get medication. Maybe some people do massage. When, when I, you and I have arthritis, what do mm -hmm. we do? We take medication. Take medicine. Sometimes we do massage. There's some people that do um, uh, acupuncture. And we actually do acupuncture on one of our snakes. Yep. Who would have thought you'd do acupuncture on a snake? How cute is that? So that actually goes with a, a good question that we Great had job, right? earlier. Because um, I think a lot of people probably have seen that, unfortunately, one of our sea lions passed away. Oh, and bless so the heart of these um, we did have Stephanie ask us what happens. She said, sorry to, if this is morbid, but no. <laughs> what it's happens important. after they do pass away? It's an important question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's, a, there's a few things that will happen. Um, and you may know some of this too. So yeah. we'll kind of tag team this answer. Yeah. It really depends on the species. And again, it's kind of an unfair answer, but it does. Sometimes parts of the animals will go to research organizations outside of the zoo to look at something in a little more detail. They may want to look at the brain. They may want to look at um, some skin. They may want to take a biopsy of some of the organs, like for some primates. They may want to do that. So it really depends on the species. But a necropsy is always performed. It's a, like a, a what? A, a necrop knee what? A necropsy. Like a knee? knee? Like on your knee? Um, no. It's like an animal <laughs> autopsy, right? Oh, so if okay. you, yeah, yeah, yeah. someone, a human That's were right. to pass away, they do an autopsy. And that tells happened. the doctors how that human died. Well, our veterinarians do the same thing with the animals, but it's called a necropsy. Yeah. And so that tells them what happened to the animal. Did the animal have a heart attack? Did they have liver disease? Did they have a blockage of some kind? And yep. so then, like you were saying, um, uh, like NC State, when yep. uh, not exactly. too long ago when our ocelot passed away, yep. um, NC State took some of the parts for study. Yep. Um, so their, their bodies... Yeah are used for science in a lot of ways. So we are learning so much about animals even after death. In addition to that, we will sometimes in conservation yes. education and science, in the education side of that, we will request some of those body parts to continue the education process. If you've seen us with a pelt. Exactly. So a lot of the pelts here. So it's one of those things we understand that a lot of people are like, I, I'm not real sure about that. But the animal was under our care, and if that animal can continue to be an ambassador yeah. through educational type programs, then it's a wonderful thing to be able to share that animal with them after they've passed. And we do also have, they, we, you know, some people are buried when they yeah, pass so away. Said, that's the next some answer. people are cremated. Um, we, we do cremate the animals mm -hmm. here. Um, and we uh and that's how they're taken care of the final responsibility and like years ago when i was a zookeeper i took care of an ocelot named clark for 10 years i took care of him he passed away right they did the necropsy he passed away at 22 years old lifespan that, is oh in the wild maybe 10 right 
So he we extended his uh, his life very very long term. So we knew he died of old age, and he died of a lot of things older house cats mm -hmm. die of liver and kidney and failure, and kidney right? Failure, and they yep. knew that from the necropsy. So we kept his pelt. Yes, we we still use his pelt today, and I still tell people the skull. story of Clark when we're educating. And so even now, seven years later, we're still using Clark to teach people about Ocelot. So he yeah. will live on forever in education, which is pretty awesome. Become an amazing ambassador even in, even as they, after they've passed. Great question, though. Mm -hmm. And it's something we need to talk about. You mentioned you yeah. said it's a morbid thing. It's not. The mortality rate, get this, the mortality rate of the animals at the North Carolina Zoo is 100%. My mortality rate, 100%. Everybody dies. Every, all the animals are going to pass away. So you have to have a plan in place to take care of those. Yeah. So thank you for the question. And we do whole care. Whole care, right? Yeah. So Zinc is retired. He hangs out. He gets enrichment. You guys know what enrichment is? He yes, gets you do. enrichment, a wonderful <laughs> diet. His keepers take care of him, but he doesn't have to work anymore nope. because of the way that his body is now. So right. until, until his day comes, he gets to hang out and chill. Yeah. And we say hi to him. We do. And we, tell him we, we miss go him. We visit him all the time. We give him a little <laughs> He still cricket. lives in education. We're yeah. responsible for his care. Yep. Um, so Karen Mathis actually asked something oh, hey, to go along with that. Have you ever, um, like, passed on your, um, your biofacts to other museums? Because she actually has a daughter that's a, a marine or mammal collection manager at the Fl Florida Museum of Natural History. Oh, so wonderful. Is there ever do, I guess the, the good question, or the, the way to question this is, do zoos or museums ever share with each other um, the collections that I they have? They one. sure do. Please do. You know all about this one. Yeah, actually, uh, they do. Uh, now, now it's not that we're just like you know, hey, <laughs> open up a trench coat. I've got, I've got a pangolin skull. What do you, what do you want to trade? Everything is certified. How yes. do you put inventory? Uh, inventory, but uh, kind of the U.S. government wildlife officials. They all know what we have, right? So we have to document every single thing we have. Sort of like a library book, but the government knows everything. The Dewey Decimal System. Yes. So we have an inventory of, our, of what we have. Now, Asia's opening up. It is. We don't have any tigers. No. We would like to educate about tigers. Yeah. So what would we do? Well, there's a place in Colorado that has everything that's confiscated by the U.S. government goes to a certain place in Colorado. And we can write to them, show them all of our security protocols, show them uh, all the education that we have, yep. um, all of our certifications, and they will loan us a tiger pelt. Yeah. It still belongs to them, sort of like a library book, but they loan it to us. So then we can educate people. Huh? Go ahead. I'm trying to think if they've seen anything that, that, that would fall into here. Uh, we, zebra. We've got not the big one. Red wolf. Uh, leopard. Red wolf's not the state. It's mm -hmm. not leopard. We got. I'll think about it. Yeah, we've gotten a few. But not um, that they have seen. I think they have made yeah. it. Um, so then we we basically borrow it like a library book. They own it. We use it. So if they ever want to make sure we still have it, they can just ask. We have to show them. We have permits. Mm -hmm. um, we have gotten some things from Riverbank, Riverbank Zoo. Zoo. Riverbank Zoo no longer. Uh, had ocelots in their zoo, so they gave us the pelts they had from ocelots and an alligator, I believe. Alligators hide, yep. So we do oh, trade, Carolina Reparation. but we do have to have permits. So they just didn't mail it to us. They nope. had to get wildlife permits. We had to sign them over to us. So there it's is there is some trading involved and some borrowing, but everything is permitted. Mm -hmm. Everything is locked. Mm -hmm. Everything um, is given to only accredited facilities. Yep. And that's a team effort as well, because if you've met Nikki in the past, Nikki and I are kind of in charge of, in quotes, our inventory, our biofact inventory. Um, you see that Nikki's crafts are amazing. She's skilled that way. She also tends to those biofacts. She takes care of them. And, 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 and the word is rehabilitates them. That's not the right word. Uh, Fixes? Yes. That's not a better, that's got to no. be a better word. It, uh, she takes care, she curates them, she takes care of them. So it's huh. like, yeah, she's a curator. Uh, we right have right? like a, if our snake skin is getting too tight, she has preserves. 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 <laughs> Three preserves people, one sense. word. Woo, we got it. <laughs> she preserves okay. them. Sometimes we have to um, oil one of our, our diamondback rattlesnake yeah. one, it gets a little too dry. So we have to take very good care of them because yes. obviously we don't want them to go anywhere to be destroyed because... They are very, very, very important. Oh, yeah. We don't, want, we don't want them to go away and get yeah. damaged. 
All right, you ready to take a, a turn? Yes. That one? All right. Patty would like to know. Hi, Patty. Patty Hi, Russell. Patty, Patty, Patty Russell. We've hung out with us a, a couple times. Which animal are you most fearful of? Hmm. Ooh. Well, Wendy obviously loves things that are dangerous. Well, so okay. nothing, right? I, I can answer that very easily. I am probably in, in my personal life outside of the zoo. Okay, I can pick up our tarantulas here at the zoo, no problem. Love them, hold tarantulas all day long here at the zoo. If I'm at home and there's like a wolf spider under my bed, I turn in to a crazy lunatic. My husband, I put a bowl over it. My husband comes home, he picks up the spider, puts it outside. I can't deal with it. Now, in my zoo life, I am afraid of the higher primates because they are mm. smarter than me. I know that. They're smarter than me. They're, they're amazing problem solvers, that's for sure. Yes. So uh, wow. I'm fascinated by them, uh, but chimpanzees frighten me just a little bit. That's crazy. Uh, I'm lucky that I haven't, that's one of the good things about, being, about not being a zookeeper. I haven't had a whole lot of those kind of challenges. Um, they always say the animal that, you know, which which is the most dangerous animal, the one that just bit you is kind of a dangerous animal. If you've ever been <laughs> bitten by an animal, that's kind of a dangerous Parrot. animal. Parrot. Um, yeah, parrots are not fun. <laughs> I have worked with parrots before, and that's not they any fun. They get the red eyes when yep. they're mad. Woo. They yep. Um... Ugh, wow. You're thinking too hard. Just I know. Just say it. I don't know. I don't have. You're not scared of any animals. No, I'm scared. I'm, I, I, there's so much respect for some fear. Something you saw yeah, in, I would in say a dark healthy alley, respect. what would make you run? What would make me run? I mean, I got a list. Like, I can alphabetize it. Polar bears scare them. Polar bears are very terrifying, as I far worked, as in the wild. I, I worked seen. polar bears, and they're the one animal that scared me every day that I worked. But see, I've seen them in the wild. I was very lucky to see them in yeah. the wild, and they were very curious but that was it. I didn't see any kind of negative behavior. Yeah. I got um, stopped by We were also very protective. We were very protective. Primates are way high on the list. They're real smart. Um, a lot of the big cats, because again, the power yeah. of them, and we just don't know that. Um, I love horses, but I am terrified. I guess I am scared of horses. Yeah. Zebras and mules and donkeys, not a problem, but a horse. They're, they're so big. They're big. powerful. They're beautiful and magnificent. They're powerful. But I know, they, I know for a fact they can bite, and that's not fun. I got drugged by one. Um, so if I had to say fear, because I did, I would do this with the horse. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be. Yeah. Just stay over there with the horse. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. That's, that's a good question. I didn't know that either. Different. That was very interesting. Respect. See, I wouldn't have picked a horse for you. I yeah. know. Yep. <laughs> cool. All right. More questions. We have so many good questions. Yay, guys. Thank you so much for asking questions. Uh, Becky asks, this is an interesting question. I like this. Hey, Becky. Can native animals um, wander onto the zoo property? Oh. Regularly. <laughs> All the time. Regularly. One this is their So we know by name. First. <laughs> yes, we actually have a raccoon that we call No Mask because it's a raccoon with no mask on his face. Um, and she or he, and they're very smart too, um, keeps coming back. And we see her uh, before COVID, always in the trash cans, uh, teaching her children where to go to find food. And then during COVID, when the zoo was closed, we would just see her walking in front of the windows of our offices. You guys got anything? Hanging out, going back and forth. Uh, there was sort of a sad story. There was a story of a goose and a polar bear. Do you remember that mm -hmm. story? I was here for that. Two geese uh, made a nest made a very above bad polar bear. And one came in for a landing into the nest and, and pulled up a little short, landed in the polar bear pool. Bad ending. And the polar bear used it for enrichment. Remember enrichment? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, the native, there's... They come in all the habitats all the time. Uh, ocelots used to drag possums in. Say possums, raccoons, squirrels. Into their habitats all the time. Um, deer yeah. have made their way onto that on here before. One this morning um, crossed the road when I was coming in. Yep, there's been there's been reports of coyotes in the area. Um, so yeah, it's just fox. Yep. I saw turkey. a fox. Turkey. Saw a fox went across what tiny grasslands once. Yep. So yep, it's a wild space. Five. Hundred acres. We built our zoo on space. their home, really. So you expect them to be here, and we just and we live with them. Yep. We have graphics in the park that say the snakes were here first. Yep. Leave them be. Yep. We find them on the path. Very cool. My mask is not staying above my nose very well. I thought <laughs> I, would, I thought I would wear the fun alligator mask, and it's just a little too small, so I have to keep moving it up. It's just because he has a big head. 
Um, I'm sorry, what? No. <laughs> I had a frog in my throat. Frog? Yeah. Ah, you got a frog. Alright, so, so Tanya says. Oh, right? Hey, Tanya. <laughs> hey, Tanya. Hey, Tanya. Uh, she says she agrees with you, Steve, about horses. She needs to manage a horse training facility. Yeah. So oh, wow. I used to work with. I, well, I, I used to volunteer you, with horses, too. And yeah, healthy respect, I think that's. Healthy good. respect. So those are good ones. They've got a lot um, of teeth. So, one more question that I have right now from Sweet. Mary, um, Mary, Mary Beth. What new animals uh, can we expect to see when Asia opens up? That's Do a we great know question. any? Yeah, yeah. we got a couple. They, there's going to be a few, and they will be animals, and uh, they will have teeth, some teeth, maybe some fur, and there's, some scales. There's some plants, probably too. Some scales, maybe, maybe some scales, maybe some without scales. I think she wants to know what kind of animals. Oh, is that right? Do you want to know what kind yes. of animals, right? Yes, yes. What what animals can we expect? We got tigers coming. Tigers definitely. Tigers will be here for sure. We have some here right now. What's here can... already? I think we've met them. Komodo dragons. They're here. They'll be on there. They'll be growing. They'll become adults. Um, there are there's a few birds and a lot of reptiles that are coming in as well. That list isn't isn't finalized. I know they're hoping to get king cobra. They're hoping to get Ooh, king cobras. That here. makes me a little nervous. Um, they're scary. Yep, they're they're looking, awesome. They're amazing. Longest venomous snake in the world, up to 18 feet long. They are just massive. Almost two basketball hoops. They're beautiful. Um, they're looking at bringing an otter species in, uh, which would be really fun to have. Um, some, uh, some vultures from Asia also hope to have them in. The story we hope to tell in some of that loop is the predator-prey story. That would be ideal if we can do that um, with them. So in Asia, the idea that, that nature can recover and survive within spaces will be one of the stories we're able to tell in that area. Um, don't have an opening date for you yet. Um, we say regularly 2024, 2025. Um, the money is here, so it's not a COVID issue, but now it's all the contractors and all the planning that has to be kind of stepped back up a little bit. So. Keep that ear out for Asia. It will come. It will be here. That's for sure. Uh, it's just a timing thing now. What do you... What did Real quick, though, to go with Asia. Um, what are Linda asked, are, are the new animals for Asia coming from other zoos? Yes. Like our tigers and stuff like that. Yes. Those will all be working with, with the SSP programs. Uh, if there's an animal that needs to be bred, needs to be um, brought in, that gives everybody time, several years, to be able to bring those animals to us. In time, so the animals will be coming from other facilities. There, there may be some of the small reptiles um, that uh, are not, but that's something that we'll be having that have to work on that uh, in time to see what's going on. But you can count on, especially the mammals, the birds, uh, being bred under human care at other facilities, at other zoos. Why you left and you came back with? A I was going to say, Amanda says, "Where's Wendy?" Um, I have. Well, I, I wanted to bring up. Come we back never know, with you. Amanda. We never know. I know. <laughs> I I had to take off uh, my watch and my rings uh, so what? I could bring on our next. Look at this friends. animal. How cool is this? Because he doesn't. Um, she. Gosh, she is so big. She doesn't big. get to see people as often. We always bring other snakes, and this one is probably one of the most common snakes you're going to see in your backyard here in North in Carolina. Yep. And actually, across the U.S. Mm -hmm. This is an eastern rat snake. Sometimes you'll hear the term gray rat snake, you'll hear the term black rat snake. They've kind of gotten rid of the color designations with these guys. Now it's eastern rat snake um, because their color patterns are so varied on the eastern rat snake. They went in and said, you know what, let's just call them what they are. So you see that wonderful coloration. Now, if you see the black rat, the, the, color, phase, the color phase, can you see, Leslie, are you able to get the chin? We can see. That's a dead giveaway for a rat snake. The white underbelly, the white under, especially at the chin, because it kind of gradates out as you go down the body, it kind of goes away. But under the chin, you can see that white. That's a giveaway for a rat snake, especially when comparing them to the black racer. Yeah, that's where people, they yes. just call everything a black, a black snake, snake. And there's actually two species that people get confused. Great point. Yeah, that's very sure. So the black rat snake and the black racer. The rat snake has that white kind of on the chin, where the racer is more black. And the name racer, they're quick. They're fast. They're these guys, very fast. He's got the, the eastern rat snake that you see here. Um, this is uh, Scoots. Scoots. 
and sticking that tongue out. Not because he doesn't like you. He's tasting the air. I'm guessing that Leslie had a mouse for breakfast because he's really How'd you focused, know? Really focused on you there. Maybe one of our digital guests did because he is just <laughs> she is just staring that down. Um, no ears. They have no ear openings. We've learned about that in the past. No eyelids. They cannot blink. Do not get into a staring contest with a snake. You, you will, will lose. lose. These guys are a mammal eater, so they're taking they're taking. Um, those animals that can give you and I diseases, that can get into our houses. Rat snakes are amazing pest controls. And they may also, they're not going to fight a copperhead, but they will sometimes keep copperheads from the area just because they're present and eating the animals the copperhead wants to eat as well. So you see that competition. Sometimes the rat snake uh, is very good at keeping copperheads away, not because they eat them, but because they eat the prey that the copperhead also eats. Amazing pattern, amazing coloration on the eastern rat snake. Non-venomous, non-venomous. Although Wendy is venomous trained, she's not going to handle a no. venomous snake by hand like this. I do a lot of dumb things in my life, but <laughs> I would definitely not pick up a venomous animal. That's funny. Um, they are constrictors, so they're going to squeeze their prey. Rat let's, prey. Show, let's show them how. Let's show them how? How, that, how it would feel to be prey. Okay. Yep, sounds good. We've done this once before. Ready? Take a deep breath. <gasps> Hold it. Another one on top of it. Don't let it out. Another breath. How about one more? Nope. Don't nope. pass out. Nope. Oh, gosh. So that's what happens. Every time the prey takes a breath, the rat snakes or the constrictors, whatever they are, ball python, boa constrictor, whatever, squeeze it a little tighter until you can't breathe anymore. So they're suffocating you or they're literally stopping the blood from flowing because they're squeezing so tight. These guys are also known for swallowing their prey alive sometimes. If they catch it, they'll kind of finagle their body around and they'll just begin to work their jaws because their jaws can work independently. One side can work back and forth and they'll move a prey item down their throat even if it's alive. Happy breakfast for you yeah, guys. Yeah, that's just wanted, a, just wanted to share that with you. That's a real uplifting story for the morning. Well, it's, it's late, so they're fine. They, they've had breakfast already. I do think another really cool thing about, the, about all snakes, I have a snake at home. When they shed, even the scale over the eye comes off. Even that's got to be an amazing picture. I think they just got a, a tongue bath at home. <laughs> that's a shower. It's hard to tell depth perception on this. <laughs> that's fantastic. That's well, a great shot. I'll come hey, Scoots. Fantastic job. How are we doing on questions over there, Ms. Oh, Lester? we've got more. I just okay. want to make sure. While she's adjusting that, I do want to tell you that on Thursday? Yes. Okay, so this week... Yes. Um is our Ask an Expert. And, and they consider us experts? For some reason, they got Steve and I on the docket this week. So on Wednesday, on Instagram Stories. Instagram Stories. Um, you will be able to ask us any questions that we don't cover today on Instagram Stories. And then on Thursday, we will answer those in Instagram. Yep. So, so we'll answer them in the moment, sort of. Yeah, check us on out on um, Ask an Expert. Who knew? Um, and we will answer any other questions. Yeah, Instagram stories. You'll see those. See that posted on Wednesday on Instagram stories. And if for some reason we don't get some of your questions now, keep asking them. And we'll be Wendy yeah. and I will definitely we'll be online later and answer today those and answer like, those. I, like I always do. We have a. We wanted to do uh, instead of like a craft of Steve and I because that would mm. be uh, weird. We decided with Nikki that each one of us would bring our favorite craft to highlight. You want and, me to take him? Or you? No, it's okay. You can hold it. You can van it for us. I, I, picked, I don't think van it very often. I picked the Venomous Lizard episode. This is the Beaded Lizard and the Gila Monster. And these are made out of uh, toilet paper or uh, paper, towel uh, paper towel tubes. And you can paint them however you want your lizard to look. Uh, I accidentally knocked off the eyeballs, so <laughs> you can give your lizard two eyes. Um, but Nikki did a beautiful job painting these to look like the Mexican Beaded Lizard and the Gila Monster. Awesome. And then I chose my favorite, and his eyes are coming off too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the eyeless bee right now. It's the eyeless bee. Here you go. Your eyeball fell off. So here is, you guys remember this one? Upcycled soup can. Upcycled soup can. Made. So 
With a can, of course. Turn it around. That was from our painted honeybee. Honey yeah. When you caught me singing, if I'm not mistaken, that oh, wasn't yeah. that was the meanest thing you've ever done to me. <laughs> well, I mean, that's those, my job. Bolts, little screws up here, plastic bottle. And then on Wednesday, our episode is exciting. Is exciting, and we're giving you a preview of what it might be about. And Nikki, this is the preview for the craft on Wednesday. This is amazing. It's making stained glass out of stuff you have at home. Out of stuff you have at home. So pretty. You'll have to learn more about it on Wednesday. But this is but a isn't sneak that preview. And look at this blue one. Are you kidding me? Bringing it back to the purple. <laughs> I can't believe all three of us. I know. Purple. We all like purple. I love it. <laughs> it's because it's a great color. We always do a shout out. Um, yeah, I had mine earlier. You Thanks guys did the anniversary. You. I want to give a shout out to my nephews in Texas. I miss you so much. Hi, Hi Bennett. Hi, Logan. I love you very much. Aunt Wendy loves you. Hi, Bennett. So there's my shout out. And we just wanted to shout out to all of our digital guests. Oh, my. For sticking with us all these months. This has been a wild ride it's for us. It's been a trip, hasn't it? It's been an amazing thing. And as much as we've learned, we hope you guys have as well. And it's been amazing also. We've said it a few times. Getting to know you guys. Being able to do it's something like wonderful. this back and forth. It's been fun for us. And hopefully one of these days we'll get to meet you in person here at the North Carolina Zoo as well. So, yeah, we're over 55 episodes yes. that you guys have been with us. So, thank you so very much. And we so, still have a lot planned. We do. We already have a uh, September almost all planned, now. planned. What you got, Leslie? Uh, so, I just wanted to ask our digital guests out here. I'm going to put Steve on the spot. <laughs> so, we were, you were joking and saying you don't want any crafts of you guys, but I still think we should get a cardboard cutout of Steve and make it... A, like a picture spot, you know. Say yes or no if you think that'd be a good idea. I mean, it. We I may be, with, I may be doing it with my own money, but we can even do adventure team cutout. If it's a team cutout, that, that might be more. I know more. he'd be more apt to do it if it wasn't just him. I knew we should have asked somebody else to come with questions. <laughs> But it's been awesome. Guys. Also, can so, I give a shout out? Yeah, please do. I would love to give a shout out to my nephew Bradley, hey, Bradley. who I get to see this weekend Yay. after a long time, so I'm very, very excited. Awesome. That's awesome. Nice to meet you, Bradley. What you got? You said you had a couple more questions, real quick. We'll take a couple more. And then oh, we'll... sure. And then let's Let finish me it out. Yeah. Find okay. those questions. We'll come back, um, and Stephen and I'll yep, answer we'll them. We'll continue answering questions. Online, and we'll, yeah. Those of you that are watching this, so some, so I think it was Vaughn. Said she came back later and asked yeah. and watched it once. And I think Tanya, I think you watched it later on at one time. Um, if you are watching it now, after it's live, go ahead and ask a question. Because Wendy and I are going to go back and watch them we'll too. We'll still answer. So yeah, ask your questions even if it's not live. Or if you come up with a question later on, Wendy and I will go back on and read them later. Or so. Instagram. Oh, On yeah. Wednesday. Yep. All right. So Angie says her hey, three-year-old wants to know how polar bears like the snow. And then she just said something else. And she, so Angie also said her three-year-old also wants to know if the flamingos like snow and why the animals that don't like snow don't like it. That's a great question, Angie's child. Um, polar bears love it. We actually bring, we actually make snow for our polar bears yes. in the wintertime. We make snow for our polar bears in the wintertime. We have a machine. We do. And in the summertime, we'll provide them with big, huge piles of ice sometimes. If you saw the Arctic Fox episode, you saw that we gave them little piles of ice. With the polar bears, we can give them more ice. And they have a chilled floor that they yep. take naps on. The yep, floor the is actually cold. cold. Yeah, so neat. So polar bears love it. Flamingos. Well, I'm our flamingos sorry. here. Yeah, still, I'm going to say it. We so learned, that. we learned, they there is one species altitudes. of flamingos that live where it snows. And that, like, blew my mind because I didn't know that. High altitude critters. Yeah. But our guys aren't real keen on no, the snow. No, they usually are, are. They go inside when the snow's on the ground, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So a lot of our animals that are from Africa, um, even though they were born at other zoos and some born here, um, they're still not built to handle those cold temperatures. So once the temperature gets down 45, 40, 32 ish, sometimes we're able to bring those guys in to heat at the barns yeah. just because it's a little more comfortable for them. 
But our polar bears, our black bears, they're outside they're awake, all day. Yeah, they're out all the time. Cougars, and then, they can handle even it. in those middle temperatures, then they have a choice. They can go inside or outside, and it's totally up to them. Somebody asked the question, well, I wish I could remember who. Unless you remember who asked about the best time to come to the zoo? Oh, I don't. That was a long time ago. So, the best time to come to the zoo is in the fall. Or the spring, the cool times. The cooler times. Even in the winter, to be honest with you. If you can handle a little bit more of a chill in the air, because the animals are that Almost much more active, the animals are out. out and most of the animals are out, it's a great time to come is in the fall yeah. and, the winter, and the spring. And, and it's not as crowded. And some animals, are, let's be honest, are never really going to be active, like the lions. Hey, lions. They do their job. They sleep about 20 hours a day. Which is so what you expect. That's what they do in the wild, out yep. in nature. Great point. Uh, okay, so I, it seems like our questions are um, slowing down. That's but cool. I that's did, great. to take us out, I think... Um, I hope a lot of you feel this way too, but Becky said, quarantining has been enjoyable with you guys, and I've learned a lot. Aww. Oh, Becky, that's so sweet. You guys have made, because our job normally, we're out doing programs for people in person. So we can't do that, obviously, because you're quarantining. We're quarantining at home when we're not here. So you guys have actually made our quarantine yes. enjoyable as well. Even We've had to learn how to do this digitally. We're all still sort of learning. You've been amazing. But we have we have really enjoyed this. Our, our other team members are doing programs virtually. We're doing classroom programs virtually on Thursdays at 1 o'clock. You guys mm -hmm. can find that on our website. I'm sure our friends answering questions for us can yep. put that link up there. Yep. So if you are homeschooling your kids... You can totally join us at 1 o'clock. We do bring um, some on of Thursdays. our animal friends on Thursdays. And then we do have other um, things online for parents at home. And you can always watch our old episodes of Zoom Absolutely. Adventures. They're on YouTube and on our Facebook page. Yeah. You know my parents watch. My mom and dad watch all the time. Yes. They are always commenting on how well you do with your videos. Oh, well, thank you. How about that? Well, Did you, you see all the wonderful comments? The bad yeah, episode? Yeah, the bad the one. You nailed bad. Yeah. Well, if you, didn't, if you didn't do so well hosting, we would just be a hot mess, wouldn't we? So, elbows, both of us. Teamwork. What did we? Quarantine. Quarantine. We did. Quarantine. Quarantine. So, so, yeah, it's been amazing. And thank then, you. We can do this without you. If you didn't watch, no one would listen to us, so we wouldn't need to be here. So, thank you so much for everything you guys have done for us as well. One of our biggest challenges is interacting with a camera. We're, we always, like, like Wendy said, we always have an audience out there. <laughs> Then they so, laugh or they like, oh, or they're so don't. bored. <laughs> and then you know to move on. So yeah. this has been hard. So it's been a challenge. But, in, and I can say this in all honesty, when I know you guys are there. And I'm going to say me, just be yeah. a little selfish. Yeah, I no. know you guys are there, so it makes it easier. I know who I'm talking to. I have met some of you this way. Yeah. And I've got Wendy amazing behind the camera. And now Leslie has been here today. If you, didn't, if you don't remember, Leslie was part of the team before we had to split up. Yeah. So it's awesome to have her back so, uh, today as well. So the, the band's back together. I know. We're back together for a day or two. Anyway. And so thank you. I'll echo with Wendy's thank you very much for making this that much easier for us to do. And thank you for the kind words. So 10 o'clock on Wednesday. Yep. Uh, we will be bringing you Flutter some eyes. fluttery friends. Uh, it will not be live. It will be taped. But Steve and I will be there with another a few of our friends typing away live and watching it with you. Um, live, but not live. Right. You know how it works. We'll be watching with you live. And then we'll see you again next Monday, live and in person. Mo don't forget Wednesday, though. It's a reminder of Wednesday. Uh, what? Instagram. In Instagram stories. Yep. You'll ask be able to ask expert. some other questions. We are experts for some strange reason. And then we'll be answering those questions for you on Thursday. Thursday. So a lot of Steve and Wendy going on I this know. week. So it might be a little too much. I love it. Overdose. <laughs> All right. You All right, guys, guys. Have a great day. Yeah, thank you so much. Stay safe. We appreciate you bringing us into your uh, classes and homes. Do stay safe. we we'll see you again soon. Bye, y'all. Bye, everybody.